Hi, my name is Joseph Mayo, and I'm here today with my teaching partner, longtime PGA Tour player, Grant Waite. And in this short video, we're gonna discuss angle of attack and how it could and oftentimes should change where you're aimed. Now Grant, when we're dealing with the angle of attack, specifically with the driver, it presents a unique scenario. The ball's on a tee, therefore we can hit up, we can hit down, or we can hit level. So based upon hitting up, down, or level, how can that change where we should aim? Well, if we're talking in terms to, for a visual representation here, if we have a Ferris wheel that's rotating on this 90 degree or vertical axis here, so it's going all forward and down, there is no out. If we're going on a horizontal axis here like a merry-go-round, it's going forward and out, but it has no down. Now as a golfer, we're playing somewhere in between that. So we're on an incline. So that means as we're coming on our downswing, we're gonna be going forward towards the ball. We're gonna be coming down, but we're always gonna be going out relative to the direction of our swing. And the same would be if we were going up, we're now going forward, we're going up, and we're coming in relative to that swing direction. So you're saying, Grant, that any time that the golf club is moving downward, it's also moving outward in relation to swing direction. That's correct. And if the golf club is moving upward, it's moving in in relation to swing direction. That's correct. All right, well then that begs the question, what is swing <laughs> direction? Exactly, okay, so swing direction, we're gonna say, we're gonna measure that from about he, uh, knee height to knee height, and it is really the direction of your swing when you were to look at um, as on a 2D or two-dimensional apparatus like a camera. So it's missing one of the dimensions. So what you're really seeing is the direction of your swing when you're drawing all those lines. You're not really seeing the path because the third dimension is the outward uh, that has been created by the downward or the inward created by the upward. So when you're looking at a student as an instructor uh, and, and, and the student looks as though they're making uh, maybe an over-the-top move, you're not seeing a uh, club path, you're seeing swing direction. Swing direction, that is correct, yes. Okay, fantastic. Well, if we have a scenario, Grant, where we've got three students on this practice tee right now, and all of them want to draw the ball, we've decided, and right here on the ground, if you'll notice, we have this white rod which signifies our target line. So, Grant, that could go to the flag 185 yards away, it could be the center of the fairway. And to draw the ball, we have decided through all of our teaching that a club path, which is approximately four degrees out, is a good solid club path to draw the ball reliably. So this yellow rod signifies the club path, which is approximately four degrees out because we have decided through all of our teaching that a club path of approximately four degrees is about right to reliably draw the golf ball. Right. Okay, so the first student steps on the tee box, PGA Tour player, we put him on track man and we measure his angle of attack to be four degrees down with his driver. So the ramifications of that, we know that approximately for every one degree down, you're gonna be hitting one degree out. So in this case, if he's hitting down four degrees with his driver, that's gonna give us a path number of four degrees out or to the right. Of his swing direction. Of his swing direction. So what you're saying is, is that tour player can stand here, Grant, if you'll address this, he can stand there with pretty much a zeroed out swing direction. Yeah. And the angle of attack is producing four degrees rightward path. That's correct. So he can aim theoretically at the target and draw the ball every time. Perfect, and he should. All right, so the next student, LPGA Tour player, we put her on track, man, she's hitting up two degrees. Right, so we would say if she's hitting up two degrees, that means that the path is two degrees to the left of her swing direction. So if I was to say, okay, that's two degrees, for example. Now we want her with a four degrees path to the right, so what does she do? She's got to aim two degrees to the right just to get back to straight, but we need four degrees of pass. So she goes an additional four degrees, that gives her six degrees. She's aiming to the right to end up at that four degrees of path that we've decided that we like. Absolutely, absolutely. And the third student steps up, a uh, retired insurance salesman, uh, plays golf three times a month, has a club head speed of 85 miles per hour, and he's hitting up four degrees. Now we love that attack angle at that speed. For sure, yes. Where does he have to aim to draw the ball? Okay, so his four degrees of up is producing four degrees of path to the left of the swing direction. So let's say it's over here somewhere. 
So what does he do? He aims four degrees more to the right just to get back the path back to zero, but we want four degrees of path to the right or out, so he aims an, an additional four degrees. That means he's now aiming eight degrees to the right. So Grant, are you telling me that we've got three students standing on this tee box on TrackMan radar, all three of them are hitting basically the same drawing type shot, and none of them are aimed remotely close to one another? That is correct, and they shouldn't aim anywhere close to one another. And it's all because of? Angle of attack. Thank you, Grant. On behalf of Grant, I'm Joseph Mayo. Thank you for watching our video.